All right, beep away. Okay. All right, so um, so I'm Sarah Ivory. I'm at Penn State, um, and I'm going to be talking about some progress that we've made um, relaunching the African pollen database, both as a constituent database of Neotalma, as well as um, an independent um, database on a separate website. So I'll be giving this talk on behalf of you know all of the African pollen database community because there are too many people to mention who have been involved in this huge effort. But um, yeah, okay, so you beep. Um, okay, so recent activities and accomplishments. So the African Pollen Database was first launched in 1996, and it existed as a, a standalone site, so it was not a constituent database of Neotoma until 2007 when funding lapsed. Um, and after funding lapsed, um, the website went defunct, and um, all of the records that had been on that website were no longer accessible, and it eventually went out of date. So um, in 2019, we actually um, ended up receiving some funding um, from the Belmont Forum. This was a, a grant that was mentioned by Jack earlier. Um, this is the EXCEED project, which is, stands for Abrupt Change in Climate and Ecosystems Data and e Infrastructure. And a big part of this grant proposal funded um, us being able to relaunch um, an African pollen database site as well as become a constituent database within the Atoma. Um, so in order to organize that, right after we got funding in 2019, we held our first workshop outside of Paris um, in order to get the community back together after you know, um, over a decade of kind of being out of communication with one another um, and put together this um, APD data flow chart that you see on the right-hand side of the slide. Um, and essentially what we decided in this workshop was to um, kind of develop a sort of decentralized model of the database, the database across two different hubs. So as an APD constituent database within Neotoma based on Tilia that could, you know, then also provide uh, services to data users through the Neotoma APIs, like through the new Neotoma 2 package. Um, as well as this secondary site, which is actually based on a different standardized data format, the linked paleo data data format, um, which I'll talk about in a second, provides its own um, services, which are sort of like unique and, and very useful to um, the APD community and data users. Um, so as a part, I'm going to be talking mostly about the Neotoma side of this, as a part of getting that effort going in early 2020, um, Eric Grimm held a, a data steward training in Amsterdam, um, where you can see the picture at the bottom are the data stewards that were trained in that initial round of data steward training, including myself. Um, it was 15 of us. Um, and then I've trained five more data stewards through um, some virtual training resources that I developed that are available online. Um, so we have 20 data stewards currently that have been working on mobilizing data. Um, and then in the last year or so, um, we have our um, African pollen database standalone site has uh, come online and is fully functional. So in addition to the data archive itself, um, it also has a lot of very um, useful, um, super rich tools. Like it has um, a, a reference library of pollen images, um, a pollen identification tool that's interactive. Um, and we have a full um, revised taxonomic harmonization for all of the pollen records within the African pollen database. Um, based on some of that work, we um, started to pivot a little bit more towards science as well as connecting to the community to try and get data contributed as well as like start getting conversations going about what some of the interesting scientific questions were. Um, so as a part of that, we published a special issue in Paleoecology of Africa that included uh, 24 papers that came out last year. Um, and some of those are data papers, but many of them are um, papers that are focused around scientific questions. Um, and we've also been working on a lot of uh, community building through efforts of like Will Gosling is leading a project called the Mapping Ancient Africa Project funded through INQUA, um, which is supporting sort of a fusion of archaeological, paleoclimate, and paleoecological data in Africa. Um, that right now is being sort of manifested as a seminar series, but will eventually um, support some um, data workshops and a bunch of publications. Um, and then I've been leading weekly slash bi-weekly um, data steward support to help um, troubleshoot issues that data stewards are encountering, and also to provide like refresher training to data stewards as they 
you know, come back online maybe after like a month or so of, of not being as active. Um, and I also, in the last year, um, I conducted a user survey um, of the African paleoecology community to see what kinds of um, support we could provide in terms of both um, data stewardship and data contribution, as well as data use. And so I'll talk about some of the results of that in a second. Beep. Oh, sorry, sometimes it doesn't <laughs> click properly. There we go. Right. Okay, so just a quick summary of our holdings. Um, I have another figure of this that shows 2019. There's basically no dots on the map. And so this was a, a photo taken from Neotoma Explorer a few days ago. Um, so you can see our, our data holdings have increased dramatically since 2019. Total data volume is about uh, 192 sites, 277 data sets um, with you know, over almost 10,000 samples and over 3,000 uh, taxon names. Um, and we have probably a couple dozen more data sets ready to go. Most of those are like really just need me to like press a button. Some of them have like very minor taxonomic issues or other things, but um, are basically ready to go. Um, about half of those have been added over the last year. About half were added in 2021 and half in um, 2020. So we prioritized um, all of our sites at the beginning of this effort. And so that puts us basically at most of the sites that are on Neotoma right now are those that we uh, prioritize as being the highest priority or, or medium priority sites. So we've gotten through um, a good number of our data holdings. The most recent site added is Al Balid, which you can see by that star is actually in Oman, is in Southern Arabia, because we have including Southern Arabian sites because of the similarity of the vegetation in the African pollen database. Um, and we also, in addition, like other people have mentioned, have other data types included in the African pollen database, including um, some microcharcoal and lots of NPPs as well. Beep. Um, so what's coming next? I have this divide into stewarding, training, and science. Um, for stewarding, this has slowed down a lot because um, most of our data stewards have moved on to other things, um, but we have a remaining 109 terrestrial records most of them short records with just a few samples, maybe just one age that I, I kind of uh, classified as lower priority early in this effort. Um, a lot of marine sites, 24 marine sites, and lots of modern data that still need to get uploaded, um, as well as um, some non-pollen data types as well, like charcoal. Um, we've also been working with um, Nick McKay and many others, including Simon and Jack, um, to try to work on um, something that Nick is going to talk about on Wednesday, uh, a lipid to neotoma converter for uploads, which will allow uh, hopefully our two databases to basically be mirrors of one another, as well as to facilitate um, more expedited uploads. Um, I started to sort of pivot from spending my time on uploading data to um, trying to train people to use data on neotoma. And so we launched an APD workshop series earlier this year. Um, which the you can't the um, fly, top of the flyer there is a little bit um, garbly, but um, if you want the schedule for this, I could send it around. But basically, this is um, a workshop series focused on both practical workshops as well as conversations about best practices in data use, um, focused on African researchers and early career researchers. And so far, our attendance has been really great. It's been mostly early career researchers, seventy percent um, African researchers. Um, and like 40 to 50 participants each time. So it's been really great. Um, and so, and this also includes an, an APD focused Neotoma 2 vignette that Simon and Socorro put together for us. Um, in terms of the science, this has been something that's a little bit harder to track. So I'd love suggestions about how to track the science stuff that's like not happening in my direct sphere. Um, in terms of citations, we have a new citation that I have at the bottom of the slide. That's Luzine et al. 2021 for the African Pollen Database, but we also have an old APD citation, which was Vincent et al. 2007, that has received 40 citations since we started data mobilization in 2019. Um, so I think a lot of people are using the data. Uh, there are a lot of individual projects that I do know about focused on sort of continental scale questions in looking at vegetation rates of change and abrupt change, which I'll talk about on Thursday. Um, and we have a bunch of research hubs that are being launched as well, including this Mapping Ancient Africa project that is um, really being spearheaded by uh, Will Gosling. Beep. Okay, and in terms of needs and wants, um, 
a lot of the things that I have on here are just kind of echoes of what people have previously said. So in terms of stewarding dedicated steward time, a lot of our stewards were students on an RA or undergrad wage employees and they've moved on to other things. Um, so we're kind of working on some efforts to try and train new stewards focused on particular aspects of uploads that we really want to target. Um, the bulk uploader, which everybody has basically said, and then easy format conversion between different data standards. Um, so the lipid neotoma converter would be one of those things. Um, because we have two separate databases based on different data formats, one of the things that I've been thinking a lot about is cross-checking errors or variations between different versions of the database. Um, and then just kind of reiterating some of the buggy Tilia bits and lost functions like the Google Maps, um, calibration, automatic calibration of radiocarbon dates. Um, lithologies, to my knowledge, are not uploaded anymore. That was a nice thing. Um, there's no way to like clearly code hiatuses in records. Um, adding sample analysts can be like, is manual and kind of like time intensive. And then people have talked about support and, and I echo that. Um, and then another thing is like ecological groups in Africa for taxa are very different. And, and that would be something that would be sort of interesting for us to have included more flexibility. Um, I'd like to make more connections even during this workshop with other database communities, because we often get a lot of other data types submitted to us. And it's hard for me to know always like who the best person is to communicate those to, like XRF, Diatom, Ostracod records or Ostracod geochemistry or geochemistry. Um, we also, because we're kind of at a pretty mature spot with mobilization, we'd really like to make links to other future mobilization campaigns as well, um, like the Global Paleo Fire database um, or the, the, the biomarker database, constituent database that's being created, because we have a lot of existing sites that already that also have data types like that that we'd love to make sure are kind of linked up. Um, and in terms of research, I made this word cloud based on the user survey that I conducted. And you can see it really focuses a lot on, the, on data use and data analysis and teaching students to use paleoecological data in R. Um, and so that's really, for me, like kind of where the student focused training aspects towards data use are, are things that I'm really um, focusing on. Um, and that is it. Thank you.